Eric, uh, Ben was saying yesterday in the locker room that just after a game, you'll be the first to pick his brain. You know, what can I do better? It just, what is that relationship like with you guys? And a guy like that who clearly puts it out on the line every day too. Uh, Ben's just a, a smart guy. Um, we've seen a lot of football and knows a lot of football and, you know, one of the leaders on his team. So anytime I, you know, want to get advice from him or want to pick his brain about something, you know, I always ask. That's how, he, how, how he's always been since he's been here. Did you end up giving that early morning text to Ryan on Monday? And how much do you kind of keep an eye on him, wondering about his status for Sunday? Yeah, I uh, sent the text and, um, you know, he said he was feeling better than what he thought. And, um, you know, just hopefully – He's able to, uh, to to play, and um, you know, I'm sure he's working through everything he needs to do to be ready. But you know, I can't uh, speak, speak speak for Ryan. Just you know, hope the best for him, and hope he's out there. Had some big games against Houston. Does it? Do you get a little juiced knowing, you know, when you start studying them, knowing what you've done in the past. Um, every year is different. I really don't try to live in the past. Um, you know. Had some good games, but you know every year is different, so can't go out there expecting anything. Just take it day by day and get ready for Sunday. You've had success against division opponents for a long time. Why is that? Um, is there anything that you could kind of attribute to? I guess we just play well as a team, and that's all I can think of. And me just trying to go out there and do my job, and everybody doing their job well. Through these six games for you, I know you said every year is different, but from a recovery standpoint, is it still the same? And what are some of the things you're doing? To be able to bounce back after, you know, like a 30 carry game like you had. Uh, I always do my same routine. I don't really do anything different. Um, it's always the same. I don't really change up too much. I'm the league play a good bit in the preseason. How much have you been able to work with him out here, you know, since then? Um, um, whenever we get a chance to, you know, he gets in or on, on offense, we do exchange before practice, you know, things like that. And yeah, pretty much. So. How does it feel like you're, you guys are kind of building some momentum in the run game? Three straight 100 yard games for you, and it seems like you're having maybe more success each each passing week. Yeah, this mindset just um, continuing to improve, um, build off the good, and how the mi mindset of wanting to get better every day. And that's all you can hope for. And that's what my mindset is. I know that's what anybody else's mindset. Just every day, just getting better until Sunday, and letting it all pay off. You guys are playing the style that you want to play, and you're getting carry after carry in the fourth quarter to finish off an opponent. Do you get a sense of when when that breaking point happens for that defense, or you just keep keep handling the ball and doing your thing? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really worried about you know the defense. I'm just worried about what I can do and how we play and how we execute a play and the efficiency the efficiency of it, and just try to go out there and make another play. So you know, just focus on what we do and not too much on the defense. Derek, you worked with a lot of uh, coaches. What is it that uh, Tony brings uh, to you in the running back's room, and, and, and how's that relationship been uh, since you've been with him? Yeah, um, you know, he's uh, always on me the little the details, um, all the fundamentals, the techniques, and everything that you know, I need to focus on to be better, um, be, to be a great back in this league. And, you know, we work on them every day in the meeting room and out here, just focus on getting better. You know, you never – Never arrive, and I feel like that's his, his mindset. Never complacent, always stay hungry, and come out here with a, a growth mindset to want to get better and be the best player you can be. But you know, just being a, a great leader and um, have have the will to want to work and get better every day. How much Titans. would another rushing title mean to you? I'm not thinking about that right now. It's <laughs> week eight. The list, though, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm not thinking about that. I think you know the answer to that when you ask me that question. I'm not thinking about that. <laughs> Going back to Tony, he uh, Titans sent him and Brian to you know, a session this off season to, you know, try to help you know raise his visibility. You know, potentially maybe as a head coaching candidate down the road. Is that something that you see him as maybe having that kind of personality fit? Uh, is that a job you think he could handle easily? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I pray that's in his future. I mean, I can't predict the future, and um, hopefully he can stay with me as long as long as he can until then. But um, he, I think he has all the traits. Like he's a great coach. He's a great leader of men, and um, you know he, you know, wants us to get better. He's always on us about wanting to get better in the meeting room, and you know it's never too much uh, work put in, you know, whenever you're on the field and at work. So, Derek, what stands out about uh, Houston's uh, defense? Uh, I'm gonna do uh, do a lot of moving things. They play with a lot of energy, play with a lot of effort. Um, you know, guys are always around the ball, and I think they play well together on defense. 
you and Don Trail on the field together. How much you feel like that's been effective, and uh, how much does it make teams have to prepare for something else from you guys? Oh yeah, it's been fun to have us both out there, and uh, I know, you know, uh, Don Trail likes it, and just other ways to get um, guys the ball, and you know, just go out there and execute and do what we need to do to make a play happen. Stoney is doing something that hadn't really been done in the NFL. You know, six straight games, 52-yard gross average uh, minimum for each game. What is – I mean, obviously you knew he had a strong leg. What is allowing him to have continued success uh, now that he's getting a few games under his belt? Sure. I, I didn't know that stat until Robbie just told me about it, um, which obviously is great for, for Ryan and, and the team. But, you know, I think what Ryan does really best is he just works to his skill set and he understands that he's going to try to hit it as, as far as he can and not really worry about, um, you know, hey, I'm not worried about this line or that line. I'm going to just try to hit it as far as I possibly can. Um, and it's right now it's worked out for us. And uh, we'll continue to try to help him out as much as we possibly can because we know his skill set and uh, really proud of how he goes out there and works and, and does some good stuff on the field for us. And how about Randy Bullock? He hit the 200, well, 202 now, but what can you say about him, those four field goals, putting him yeah. at that mark? Uh, that, that's, that's obviously big for us. Um, anytime that we can help the team win, he had two really big kicks, obviously, in the fourth quarter for us, especially the 48-yarder um, to put us up by two scores. I'm just I'm really excited for him, happy for him, because uh, you know he's worked really hard. And uh, it's always fun to watch a player who's worked really hard, has success out there. And him going four for four um, to help out this team win um, was big for us. How's Ryan doing when he needs the, the short iron, so to speak, a 40, 45 yard punt? Yeah, you know, and really he hasn't had to use that short iron much. Um, and that's the thing that, you know, when we went and watched him at Colorado State, uh, that was something that we had to work with him a lot on. And. Uh, it was kind of difficult for him at first because he's got such a strong leg. How does he go back and go to a nine iron instead of hitting his driver all the time? Um, but he's worked really hard at it. And uh, once he gets those opportunities, you know, we really try to tell him, hey, we're going to play pitch and catch with that returner, um, which they end up usually lining up at the eight yard line anyway. So, uh, you know, if we go and just hit it to the returner, um, that hopefully helps him out too, where he doesn't need to feel like he has to hit it inside the five yard line all the time. Um, you know, we're not looking to do that. We're trying to get it inside the 10 as much as we possibly can. And if it's pitch and catch with the returner, great. Um, but, you know, when he gets that opportunity to go out there, I'm sure he'll do fine. How consistent has he been with his hang time? <clears throat> So, yeah, uh, obviously the past couple of games hasn't been as consistent as we would like. Um, and that's a lot of different things. Um, you know, we had pressure on the very first one, um, which is not what we want. Uh, and he had to kind of adjust a little bit to it and didn't hit a ball that, you know, he's capable of hitting. So, you know, obviously that's a big thing for us as long as getting distance, but also getting the proper hang time with that because we're not looking for a 60 yard punt with 4-0 hang time. We're still looking for a 55, 60 yard punt with over four or five hang time. So uh, that's what we're gonna work on again today with him is trying to get a little bit more consistent than he was earlier in the year with the hang time, um, which we feel very confident he can do that. Are you happy with what you've seen from, from Monty uh, in the first couple of games back and what, what's maybe he good at? <laughs> Well, first thing that jumps out to us is his physicality and his energy. Um, I think he ended up having to get an IV after he made that tackle inside the 20 because he ran about 30, 40 yards uh, to celebrate. But, you know, th this guy's excited to come out there. Obviously, he missed football when he was injured. Um, so he is he's raring to go. And, um, you know, that's the biggest thing about Monty. We got to try to tell him to scale back a little bit. Uh, because his energy is just through the roof right now. Uh, we got to try to scale him back a little bit once he makes those plays that, hey, we can celebrate with our teammates and, uh, and get moving on to the next play. But uh, we're happy to have him back. He, he did a really good job for us um, with that tackle inside the 20. And in our punt coverage, he did a good job too. Morgan's on the injury report this week. Who's your backup snapper, and how, how much work does that person get typically? Yeah, usually what we end up doing is we have to have a backup snapper, and we try to get multiple guys to do it, especially during the offseason and training camp. And Jeff Swaim has worked on it. Uh, Kevin Rader, those guys um, 
heck, we even had some offensive linemen uh, during training camp work on it too for us. But, uh, you know, we usually end up getting Jeff and a couple other guys some reps during the week. Um, and it might be one or two, but we've got to be prepared at any point in time, just in case Morgan goes down, that we got a guy that can come in there and protect too. Why swim and not like a center? Uh, well, usually we want to try to cover afterwards too. Um, that's a big part. If we can get a guy in here that's athletic enough, like a tight end, like a linebacker that can snap, um, you know, if he can snap it with some accuracy and then run down there and make a tackle, uh, that's what we're looking for. If we had an offensive lineman in there, obviously it would be just for protection and we wouldn't expect much out of him in the coverage unit. So we want to try to get more of a big skill type guy to do that. And, and um, Morgan's not a guy we talk about a lot, which I guess is a good thing if you're a long snapper. I mean, what, what does he do so well that, that makes him so consistent? Well, it's consistency. Um, that's the biggest thing. And it's really helpful having a guy like Morgan Cox um, that can help out a young holder in Ryan Stonehouse uh, just being really consistent with his ball that he throws back, where Ryan doesn't have to move the laces. He doesn't have to worry about the ball working it way over to the right or to the left or down low or up top. You know, that ball is right to him. The laces are there all the time. And what Ryan just needs to work about or worry about is, hey, I'm going to put this thing down on the spot, maybe have a different lean depending on the win. Um, but he's just a professional, does everything um, that we're looking for him to do, and he does it really well. How nice is it to be in the fourth quarter when you can keep handing the ball to Derek to, to try to put away a game? Yeah, it, it definitely was a, a great feeling to be able to call those runs in and watch those guys finish the game the way they did. Really proud of the offensive line, the way they battled through some things. That's a really talented front they went against. And, uh, you know, it was, it was fun to get back to that feeling. Obviously, we'd like to be able to, you know, make it a little less interesting there. But, uh, but you know, very pleased with how Derek finished the game and how the line finished the game. Several days from from Sunday. How, how do you approach maybe Ryan through a week when maybe he's going to be limited in some practices and trying to get him ready for Sunday? Yeah, he's a pro, you know. So it's not as much about physically him, uh, you know, having to go through those things. He's mentally prepared. He always is, uh, and he knows how to get himself ready to go uh, from that standpoint. So we'll see how he progresses, and and I'm sure they'll let me know uh, before we kick off. He spent X play on Sunday, how valuable could it be for Malik to get to run the first team offense this week in practice? Yeah, I think experience is, you know, irreplaceable. And, and Malik did a great job yesterday with the stuff we asked him to do. And, and uh, he's growing each and every day. And he's learning what it's like to be a pro quarterback. And so, uh, you know, I think all that stuff's great for Malik. Is there a balance in, you know, preparing the offense with Ryan? Obviously, a different skill set than Malik. Is there is there a balance you have to kind of walk with that when you're preparing for the week? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, two different players with two different skill sets. And so my job is always to put players in the best position to succeed. And and so that, um, you know, can mix and match some things. But, uh, you know, we try to run our offense here, right, and have a foundation. So there's certain elements that no matter who's under center, we expect the operation to flow a certain way and, and look a certain way. So there's definitely a balance there. Uh, and, and as you're progressing through the week, it's how much do you want to dabble in that uh, would be there if it were one or the other. But uh, you know, as we approach game day, that picture will clear up a little bit more. Frustrated to be below 90% in the red zone now. <laughs> Very frustrating to not help our uh, our team enjoy a fourth quarter with a little less stress. Um, you know, I, we expect to score every time we get down there, and this is a prove it league, and you have to do that week in and week out. You know, tip my cap to the. Indianapolis staff, but uh, we expect to score every time we get down there. We got to see Malik in there and not just traditional quarterback role. Is that something that you're kind of bringing along, like a package that you would like to present for him to have an additional impact? He's such a, a talented athlete. And, uh, you know, we all remember from the preseason, I mean, I think he has the, the longest run to date, uh, including preseason, you know, so looking for ways to have him on the field. And then the first couple of times he was on the field, it was, you know, make them say, hey, they got two quarterbacks out there and we were just running a, a bread and butter scheme. So, um, you know, a little bit of a balance there and obviously had the exchange issue on the one. Uh, it's a well-blocked play. Cody Hollis did a great job. If we get that exchange, uh, you know, I think we're talking about a, a pretty big play there. So, you know, we'll, we'll see where that expands and, and uh, how far we want to go with that. With him, do you look to other, like you look at what the 49ers did with Kaepernick when he first came in, Ravens with Lamar. Do you look at with Lamar Jackson? Do you look at any of that and just kind of 
work to incorporate that into that package? You know, I think there are uh, some times in the off season where you have time to kind of go back and study similar, uh, you know, offenses or similar players' skill sets and things like that. And so you build a little bit of a bank, you know, that you can take a peek at or reference. And then certainly things come up throughout the year that you say, hey, that's a pretty cool scheme and see if it fits what you do. So, yeah, I think there's an element of that. You know, you try to uh, not get too far outside of who you are, but maybe take a peek if there's something that, that works. Well, you pull out a new look. incorporate uh, Conley into the offense this week, and what does he bring to this team uh, coming in late? You know, I've been very impressed with his study habits and how quickly – uh, you know, he's shown a commitment to learn the offense. I mean, the second he got here, he was in there with Rob Moore and working with Eric Frazier, just getting the terminology down and kind of going Spanish to English on, on some things. And, and so I've been very impressed with Chris. Uh, we'll see where that, that goes, uh, you know, and what our numbers look like from a, an active standpoint. That's always, you know, a decision that, that I'll hear from down the road. But, uh, you know, I, I think that he's worked very hard to be able to contribute if his number's called physical standpoint, just maybe size, strength, and how he catches the ball. Yeah, he is a, a, an impressive uh, physical, you know, uh, on-the-hoof receiver. So, you know, hopefully we can see him a little bit of speed work today and see what he's got and, and uh, make decisions down the road. Back to that uh, little wrinkle with Malik, or, or any trick play for that matter, how often and how long do you execute something in practice before you actually implement it in a game? Yeah, I, I think there's a, a, a little bit of a sliding scale there, right? Depends on how intricate it is. That was a rather simple exchange. Um, sometimes you need things to marinate a little while. And I remember we had this discussion after the first Colts game and the, the chig in the backfield roll pass that we did. Uh, and that was only a couple of days. And then we called it on Sunday. So, you know, I think there's a balance there. We felt good about it. We obviously didn't execute well enough, but uh, it's not, you know, by lack of uh, belief in the play. There was obvious start with a blank page and just draw up a play, or is everything sort of tweaking this, building on that sort of thing? Yeah, I think there are always game plan designers based off of certain things that the defense is doing that start with kind of a clean slate, you know, and they got uh, floor to ceiling grease boards in my office for a reason. You know, we sit in there and, and kind of uh, get in the lab a little bit and see if there are some wrinkles that we can develop. Uh, and then there's always that commitment to what we do and trying to make sure our guys can go play fast. You know, we don't want to put too much in that makes them think or remember, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to do that on this. Uh, we like to try to find that balance so the guys can go play fast. One or two of those grease boards that gets erased on a, on a Monday? Yeah, you you talking about stuff that we liked and then decided, hey, we don't want to do it? No, to, to start new for the next game plan. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There's – you know, there's an opportunity to add in those wrinkles, uh, particularly situationally and, you know, a, a couple designers off of personnel groupings or tendencies we see. Uh, yeah, so there's there's opportunities to, to add new stuff each week. Obvious, Dylan has done – go ahead. The Sorry. obvious challenges for you, as you mentioned, like Ryan versus Malik, different skill sets, having to game plan and waiting to hear what Ryan's status is. Is there a time in the week for you as an offensive coordinator that might be like the ideal time to – know just so you know what you have to bring on Sunday? Well, you'd like to bank as many reps as you can, you know. Um, so certainly you don't want to get too far into practice without having at least an idea. But the nice thing uh, about where we're at is, you know, we're not a, a big volume offense. There isn't going to be 8,000 different plays. So if we can kind of add a couple of wrinkles here and say, well, if it's him, then, it, then there are a couple things here. Or, or if it's Ryan, a couple things here. Um, that's not stressing our guys too much from a volume standpoint. So I feel comfortable where we're at timing-wise, and, and I think our guys are committed to you know having whoever's back is uh, under center. What do you think Dylan, Dylan has done stepping in for Nate the last couple of weeks? Yeah, Dylan's fought. and you know Dylan's had his uh, you know ups and downs and, and disappointments um, you know through you know the kind of stages of, of developing this starting offensive line, but we knew. Uh, you know, back in training camp that his number was going to get called on at some point in some capacity. And Dylan has been such a professional and a hard worker. Uh, I was really happy for him to have some some real good snaps out there on Sunday. And, and again, to be part of finishing the game the way we did, uh, that was cool for those guys. And, and uh, I really appreciate Dylan and the approach he's taken. What, what went into, because I know the opportunities were limited, but what went into him being able to have some impactful catches this, this past week? Yeah, one of the things that we try to talk a lot about is, you know, don't 
count your chances, just make your chances count, you know? And, uh, and I think he's a, a perfect example of that. He's somebody who maybe his number didn't get called a lot the first couple of weeks. Maybe it's coverage, maybe it was situations, whatever it is. Uh, or we just didn't run enough plays to get to some of the stuff we had designed for him. And on Sunday, his number got called and, and a couple of times in some, you know, kind of off schedule type situations, right? Once a check down and once a, a, a quick game that Ryan kind of extended the play and, uh, and he made great plays, you know, three huge catches, three huge catches, two first downs, one explosive, uh, did a nice job adjusting to the ball. So uh, I think Hoop is an example of taking advantage of your opportunities when the ball comes your way. Shane, what's been the key to uh, maybe the, the defensive improvement since the uh, you know, over the last four games? Yeah, I mean, I think last week we we kindly finally got the X play burden off our back a little bit. I think they had one play for 20 yards, um, and that was really it. And uh, I think our guys just have continued to fight. Like it hasn't been perfect by any means, um, but ultimately, I think early on the X plays overshadowed a lot of the good stuff we were doing. So. I, mean, I think when you eliminate those, you got a chance to be really good, um, and hopefully that trend continues for us. You went with Andrew, I guess, at deep safety and Amani in the nickel. How do you think that combination went, and what kind of went into that decision? Yeah, I think just game plan based on the Colts. Um, I think it worked out well. I think uh, Hook did a good job in there, communicate and understand what's going on. Obviously, Adams has been here. Um, he's improved since he's been here. Um, so we'll see. It'll be week to week, kind of based on who we have available, what we, what we want to do uh, at that nickel position. What's the biggest adjustment that Amani has to make going from deep safety to playing in the slot, and how difficult can that transition be? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, I, th I think there's a lot of similarities just in terms of our zone coverage and and the run fits. Like, we ask them to fit the run at safety like we do nickel at times. Um, I would say the biggest thing is probably some of the match man coverage type stuff, right? Just understanding uh, he's out there against receivers, what their skill sets are, where usually he's going up against tight ends as a safety for the most part. 2020, the third down catastrophe year, you were almost at 52% dead, dead last by a lot. You're at 27, just under 28% now, first by a lot. That's a huge flip. What, what's keyed? The ability to, to flip. Yeah, I think our uh, our guys are executing. They're understanding the details of every call. I think we're we're we've been good in coverage on third down. We've been tight. Um, we've had our help in the right places. You saw David with the interception last week um, as an underneath piece there. I think our zones have been effective, and then obviously the, the rush. Right, the rush is a big part of that. Um, the ability to be able to rush for and affect the quarterback. It opens a lot of things up for you coverage-wise, what you can do, how you can delegate those seven pieces in the back. Um, but guys are out there, they're executing. They're executing as rushers together. They're unselfish. Um, they're not in it for themselves. And they know each of them there is going to get theirs based on what the call is and what we're asking them to do. Um, and ultimately, like it comes down to those guys having a mentality, a mindset, like they're going to do what they got to do to get off the field. And I think our, our secondary has a lot of confidence in our rush. And I think our rush has a lot of confidence in our, in our secondary right now. So Is there's that the kind of thing you might use as an example when, when things are bad, saying, hey, you know, we can change stuff here in relatively short order. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's week to week all the time. Um, don't get me wrong, I do. I think every single week um, you could be really great at something, and the next week you could be pretty awful at something, right? So I think I think the mindset is each each opportunity we get on third down, we got to go out and execute and hopefully get get off the field. Um, but it is. It's something to build on. I, I think culture-wise, from where we were to where, we are, where we're at now defensively, um, that's just an example of kind of the progress we've made. What can you say about the way Tier Tar, he's kind of gone from being just a guy to being that guy up front for you. What can you say about his, his growth uh, over the past uh, few years? Yeah, I, I think he's... Uh, Worked really hard in the offseason. I think he's understanding the game. Um, he's played a lot of football for us, and I think he's realizing the fundamentals and the techniques and all the little things and, and the little tips you can get pre-snap based on what the offense has given you. Um, I think he's progressed in that sense. So he's, he's using that to his advantage. He's always been an extremely strong, powerful dude. Um, and he's, now he's able with the technique and fundamentals, it gets unleashed a little bit more. 
Um, so, and I'm, I've been impressed with his ability to rush. I think that's where he's come a long way, understanding who he is as a rusher, power, and then having some counters off of that. Um, but he has, he's developed for us, and hopefully it continues. Given how many uh, PBUs he got, you want to get him out there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. We'll kind of keep him rushing. <laughs> Takeaways have been huge, obviously, for you guys. Uh, first part of the season, I know it's something that Bray will harped on during the off season. What's been the key to that, uh, getting so many takeaways lately? Yeah, I think, uh, I think last week it came down to guys execute, you know. Um, great adjustment by the players to get in that call um, on the pick six. They were all on the same page. They all got lined up in a, in a timely manner, and we were able to execute it. And then obviously David has the rat piece being able to come out. And, and then ultimately it's the, the techniques and fundamentals that we're preaching. We're preaching to hammer the ball out like Mitch did at the end. We're teaching the rake. We're teaching to match the hand, which has given us a lot of, a lot of tip passes that – whether you pick it or not, um, but you're going to have opportunities to pick it off. Um, so I think the guys have taken ownership in that. They, they work it. We work it every single day, and it's carrying over to Sunday for us right now. We you have a guy that's as smart and as reliable as Kevin Byard out there on the back end, how much does that open up what you can do as a defensive play caller and what this defense can do? Yeah, I think tremendously. I mean, it's I've said it before, it's hard for – for one guy to do everything out there communication wise. I think the addition of Hook, Andrew getting up to speed a little bit more what's going on, like those guys have to be our vocal communicators, even our linebackers. I think David Long has come a long way. So you can do more the more they communicate and the more they can ultimately get on the same page. And you need a ringleader. Kevin's our ringleader. He, he gets everything in order for us defensively. But it takes more than just him. Um, but it does. It opens up a little bit what you can do based on what you're seeing. What are some of the things when you study them, what they do on offense that maybe jump out at you? Yeah, I mean, I think, the, I think Pierce is a hell of a back. I think he is tough. He runs hard. He, he's got a jump cut ability. He stretches and cuts. Um, and he tries to finish runs. Like, he is a physical, physical runner. Um, and I think they're doing a good job up front. I think they play physical in the run game. Um, and then the speed, the speed on the outside. Obviously, with Cooks, we all know about him. But they got some other guys that can stretch the defense. Um, so we got to do, do a good job, make sure we're not get, letting those guys bias. Um, and I think the O-line's done a good job protecting the quarterback. Quarterback's done a, done a really good job not taking sacks, not turning it over. Um, they're really playing the game the right way and not beating themselves right now. Roger McCurry coming in as a rookie and what the impact that he's had. It's almost been quiet in a way. Uh, for a kid to come in as a rookie and do what he's done, how impressive has he been? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't expect it just from the spring and from training camp. Um, he's always been poised. He's, he's competitive. Um, he wants to be great. Uh, he gets frustrated when it's not perfect. I think la last week he was down in the dumps about one play in the locker room. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Like, we just won that game. And he's he's frustrated at himself because he gave up a play, right? So um, when you got you got a mindset like that, especially at that position, it goes a long way. Um, but I've been extremely encouraged with him. I think he's smart. I think he understands what we're trying to get accomplished and all the different things that we do. Um, and he goes out there and challenges and competes.